Welcome back, Jeff Frick here at day four at uh, VMworld 2013, the 10th anniversary show. Uh, you're on theCUBE. We've been going wall to walls, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and now we're into Thursday. We've been here, we've been at AT&T Park, we've been at the briefings, we've been all over the place. So we're glad you're with us. Uh, we keep it rolling, and we're happy to, uh, to welcome our next guest, David Achu, the VP Corp Dev Strategy from SafeNet. SafeNet's a, a sign you've probably seen rolling up and down 101. I don't know that they've got the highest uh, visibility or profile uh, outside their network, so we're going to learn a little bit more about what they're up to. And uh, David, welcome to theCUBE. Wonderful, glad you could join us. Yeah, right there in Redwood City. You can yeah. see our logo every morning. Commuting. Exactly, yeah. right there by the Evernote, the Evernote <laughs> yeah, exactly. building, right? right there. Yeah, exactly. So tell us a little bit about, for those that don't know SafeNet, uh, a little bit about the company. So it's actually a very exciting time for us because we're celebrating our, uh, our 30th anniversary as a company, which uh, I think there's uh, not a lot of folks, uh, companies at exhibiting at the show that, uh, that can claim that. So you know, we're a company that's focused on uh, information security and data protection solutions. Uh, from you know, identities, transactions to uh, you know in encryption and protection of sensitive data, and uh, you know we we kind of, we've been able to do that for 30 years. And and what's exciting about particularly about VMworld is. I spend a lot of my time at uh, at security conferences, and this is one of the places where we've really been able to adapt our portfolio. That you know, when you're a 30 a 30 year old company, we clearly have some great solutions from the the traditional world. But as you look at cloud and virtualized environments, we've really been able to adapt our portfolio and and bring it to help people enable to do more sensitive work in virtualized and cloud environments. So it's a really exciting week for us to to get out and work with the infrastructure teams on on how we can enable them to take advantage of the benefits of virtualization and cloud. I was going to say, talk a little bit because I remember early early cloud days before it was called the cloud, you know, the ASP days back 97, yeah. 98, and everyone was petrified of shared infrastructure, yeah. shared databases, uh, access via the internet, you know, all those things. And obviously we've come a long, long way. But, but talk about what are some of the tipping points that happened for the government and sensitive information to happen to start to adopt this, and then what are, what's kind of the future look like? Yep, so you know, one of the things that's interesting about, you know, whether it's cloud and virtualization, SaaS, ASP, whatever terminology you're using, is this idea of, of using um, you know, a unified or, or a common or shared infrastructure uh, has, has made folks you know, nervous in a lot of cases, sometimes potentially warranted, sometimes not. But when, if you look at our traditional security approaches to security, that a lot of that, those tools were applied you know, at the network infrastructure level, that when you break down how most information security dollars are spent, they go into things like network security, like firewalls and IPS, antivirus, uh, and you know, those are things that are fairly abstracted from the, the what matters itself, the data. Uh, and so as we've, as we've shifted into these, uh, these you know, cloud or virtualized or abstracted environments, we use is that you've been um, forced to reevaluate how you think about security because you know, I, that, uh, you know, VM, well, VMware is doing some great things around uh, bringing some of the, the security calls into the network. Uh, once you, if you're not the, the virtualization administrator, you, you, it's, it's really hard to plug a physical firewall into a virtualized environment or send one to, uh, to, to your cloud provider. And so you've had to, to move up the stack and, and uh, it's, you know, where SafeNet is always focused is how do you attach controls to the to what matters itself, the, the identity of the data, their transaction. So things like you know, stronger authentication, encryption, uh, you know, encryption key management, so you can do encryption at scale, have, have become uh, even more relevant than, than they ever have uh, right. in these new environments. And, uh, and we're fortunate that you know, we, we saw that trend coming from uh, your last guest, you were talking about uh, you know, the, the new role of IT. And one of the things that we see is, you know, in many cases, you know, IT departments uh, may be leveraging external service providers, but even internally are becoming service providers themselves. Uh, right, and how do right. you separate data, whether it's from the HR department, from the finance department, or from you know, two different divisions that may actually have regulatory issues why they can't work together like an investment banking community uh, that um, we may take those principles we learned or from the intelligence community, take those principles and apply those in these new environments. Right, so what a, someone much smarter than me a long time ago said that you know, computers are really good at capturing information and storing information, <laughs> but they're not so good at, at getting rid of it. And now you take a virtualized environment which just by its design and intention is supposed to have a lot of things distributed all over the place. Yep. So it, with a security minded focus and, and sensitive data that the customers that you guys work with, Tell me, how do you how do you get rid of stuff? What's the, what's the story there? So yeah, so, yeah, so that's one of, <laughs> one of the beauties of encryption that uh, is uh, is that you know there there's a key that uh, allows you to um, you know, if you get rid of that key, you've effectively shredded the data, uh, whether that regardless of how that data has persisted. And so uh, you know, we have a solution that we launched the show last year uh, called Protect V that allows you to encrypt all of the data coming from a, a VM or instance or a storage container in a virtualized or cloud environment as it goes in the underlying storage system. And so if you look at some of the benefits that virtual 
visualization provided is you can say, wow, I can, you know, backup is now simple. I can snapshot things, I can, you know, plug into you know, storage solutions that make it really easy to have highly available, uh, well, you know, in, uh, insured data. Uh, but you can have a lot of instances of that data that, you know, we used to back up incremental backups daily, you know, maybe a full backup once a week, ship those tapes off somewhere in a locked uh, case. And now that data can be snapshotted, you know, every hour, every minute if there, you know, if there's someone wants to, probably the best operational practice, but uh, that uh, the data trail becomes incredibly significant and in many cases hard to control. And so when you apply encryption that when, once the entire uh, instance or, you know, your guest is, in, is encrypted as it writes in the storage infrastructure, as long as you have great key management control those encryption keys, you don't have to worry as much about how that data flows because if you can control when that encryption key is used and granted to, to read that data uh, and, and the ability to destroy and shred that key if uh, at the time that data is no longer necessary, uh, you, you've been able to remove the, the physical aspect of having to shred the data from the, the, the virtual aspect and that's, a, that's a, something our customers are, are really excited sure, about. Very excited about. Yeah. So as you've walked around the show and, and, and got to take some of the stuff in, what, what are some of the exciting innovations that you've seen that, that you can see you know, immediate benefit to some of your customers and, and your engagements? Yeah, so it's great. We, you know, we're part of being a uh, you know, a thirty-year company with twenty-five thousand uh, customers, hundred countries. Is we get to work with a lot of companies, and we have some great partners. So, I, part of my job, I lead our, our partner strategy, and uh, we have about uh, two hundred and fifty different technology partners. Um, some large ones like VMware wow. and NetApp, uh, as well as a, a number at the show. So, I think what's um, you know one of the things we're really excited by is seeing the 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 folks that have adapted their solution into these virtualized environments that uh, uh, there's too often conversations about security being a barrier uh, to virtualization or cloud and, and we see particularly things like encryption or identity uh, being enablers to cloud that you know that, that if I, I don't have to worry about applying security controls at the, the network level when I can apply them to the data or the user themselves and, and working with partners around who have done that is, is pretty exciting. The other thing that uh, I think is exciting for, for all customers is that you know, at the end of the day, the most important things you can do for security are having great IT operations practices. That if you know, if you don't know what you have, how it, you know, how it's configured, and how it changes, right. it's really difficult to apply security controls. Actually, part of the reason I love working at SafeNet is encryption is one of the controls that actually works well, even if you don't do that stuff well. Right. But uh, that uh, <laughs> when you look at what you know, VMware and a number of their partners around the orchestration ecosystem have done is that they've made it easier to have great IT operations. And while that doesn't report to the CISO, the security benefits of actually you know, being able to say, hey, here's an inventory of all of my, all of my technology and all of my sensitive data. Um, you know, every, everyone, you know, if you talk to any CISO who's been through an audit, they had to produce some, you know, some data and systems audit for, uh, and it was probably up to date for the one minute before it's delivered to the audit. That used to be a really difficult task. And now you can log into, you know, into your VMware environment, have a snapshot of all the assets in your environment. In many cases, the data sitting inside of them with a the cloud provider, um, you have that same ability because if they don't, aren't able to track what you're using, they can't bill you, and so you get great inventory information. So, so we're seeing actually a, some great benefits to security uh, just from having better operations from what this audience is, is bringing. Yeah, it's interesting because we talk quite often about you know, people, process, and tech, yep. and there's a whole lot of focus on the tech, certainly <laughs> at these types of shows, but as we know, a lot of it has to do with the people and the process, and I was uh, <laughs> doing some work with, with the security company once, and, and their, their, their biggest issue was just piggybacking. You know, they had, a, they had put a camera up at the airport and two, two catering trucks go through <laughs> one right after the other. So uh, the, no, matter what, no matter what some of the other uh, technology had in place, yep. they were just piggybacking right in. And yep. it's, if you don't have the, the processes in place, and now the IT makes it easier, you're still going to have a lot of those issues. Yeah, the, the other thing that's been fascinating the show is, you know, I think uh, if you ask someone five years ago what technology was going to be sexy, Security and storage were probably not things that have been on top of their <laughs> list, and uh, and you know it, we we have uh, a great relationship, um, you know particularly with NetApp as sponsor the show uh, uh, with uh, Hitachi Data Systems and and a number of uh, of, st of storage partners and and um, storage is is sexy again and uh, and so it, it's it's a lot of fun to work to to help address. Um, you know, the, the data protection, data security requirements in those environments uh, that, you know, this is almost as much of a storage show as a lot of the uh, storage shows are now, yeah. which is, is pretty exciting. Well, the, the cloud converged infrastructure, it's all becoming one of the same, right? Whether you uh, get the whole thing or you, you go to all these hybrid solutions. So, what's kind of, what's what's down the road? What are some some mountains you guys are looking to climb? What's this conversation going to be about two, three years from now? So, one of the things that, that uh, you know, we're, we're really excited about is um, we're the market leaders in something called hardware security modules. And if you're, uh, you know, and we call them HSMs, 
to be careful in this environment because a lot of storage folks have HSM <laughs> as a different terminology in, in a hierarchical storage management. But a, 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 an HSM is a, a, a is a encryption device. It's a hardware appliance that uh, is is very critical in storing encryption keys. It basically creates and vaults encryption keys and allows to use them securely. And and this is a business that that Safe has been a leader in for years. It's you know we we power um, you know about eighty percent of the interbank transfers in the world. Of about about a trillion dollars a day of money transfers are protected by these type of technologies. Wow. And you experience these things every day that uh, without even realizing it. Things like you know the, if you're using a uh, an easy pass or automated toll solution, anything that's using uh, encryption and has a public key infrastructure behind it tends to have one of these. Uh, the the you know one of the the challenge of them is uh, is by nature is you know what they do they have to be hardware these are you know FIPS validated highly secure environments and and uh, what we've really seen is that they are they are so relevant in these new architectures that uh, a lot of people refer to them as a root of trust uh, or a trust anchor and and so as your you know the the underlying infrastructure becomes abstracted and you have these you know massive converged environments being able to take a an asset or a workload and have it tied to something that you control uh, as as you know the cryptographic root of trust is very important but um, you know, five or ten years ago, that concept was was a fairly foreign one, and we've invested a lot. We launched uh, earlier to what we called the crypto hypervisor, which is the ability to take one of these appliances, actually partition it, um, so you can bind things over the network. So you could have a an application running in a number in a guest or a number of guests, and have them connected over the network to this. So you can take advantage of all the things like bursting and and motioning of systems uh, while still having this tied root of trust. And then we've added things like provisioning to them. The idea of you know again, having RESTful APIs, a provisioning engine application applications that can subscribe uh, to these roots of trust that uh, these things are traditionally only available to customers that, that had a pretty sophisticated crypto team you know, 10 mm -hmm. years ago. And we've made these available, uh, you know, whether in our customers' infrastructures, partnering with, uh, with service providers, made these available to, to have this trust uh, at the root of a, uh, a, a, an infrastructure or application environment to a much broader audience. And it's about, you know, having, instead of having the conversation of how is security preventing virtualization, this is always is, you know, things that people didn't think they ever could virtualize, they're now able to do so because they can show audit and control of their, their encryption keys and therefore their data. Uh, it's a pretty exciting story on, uh, on how a, a, a traditional business most people think of as, as financial services or government encryption right. is really enabling cloud consumption. So are they really starting to think like those examples of way they can, they can actually take advantage of this virtualization trend and still maintain the security that they've, that they've become accustomed to and, yep. and, and require based on regulations or whatever? We, we've seen some great examples. So the ProtectV product I mentioned, along, uh, you know, it, it talks to a key manager that has one of these hardware security modules in it, that we've talked with some, you know, particularly some financial services customers, but on the smaller side, you know, that that uh, that they've had applications that they had said they couldn't virtualize, uh, that that they couldn't do it securely because they had perhaps a proprietary database where you couldn't encrypt the data inside of the database and the vendor wouldn't allow you to install local encryption inside the system. Uh, because of support concerns, and uh, and so this this thing was sitting in the corner as a bare metal server and not getting take advantage of the agility and cost savings uh, that that's present in other IT environments. And when you take Protect V and this and and our key management and HSM technologies, we've had customers that say, "Wow, I can now take that system. I can bring it to a virtual environment. Know that at the you know, at the lowest layers of the of the guest, I know that all the I/O of that's going to be encrypted, and I have great audit uh, and and control of those encryption keys. And so we're seeing you know, people investing in security technology to enable uh, the, you know, virtualization of secure workloads. And that uh, there's a big change in conversation from three or four years ago. Yeah, that was like, uh, there, was a, there was a great joke that we were, we were at a show and someone walked by a few years ago and said, what do you do? And he said, oh, we do encryption and security. And the person said, oh, I'm interested in that. And, uh, and the, one of the people responded, oh, you must be a VM admin. <laughs> and, uh, and I think th that was unfortunately reality you know, years back. Right. Now, I think you know, we're seeing at the show that people are figuring out how can we work together? You know, how do we use this as an enabler? Uh, what are the right tool sets? Uh, it's it's uh, it's a pretty exciting time. That's great. That's great. Well, thanks for coming on the cube and sharing some of the story with us, David. And uh, again, David Ashu, VP Corporate Dev Strategy at SafeNet. You'll see their sign on 101 South on the right hand <laughs> side, right about Evernote. Um, so we uh, again we're at VMworld 2013. Wall-to-wall uh, -wall coverage on the cube. We'll be right back after the short break. You're on thank, the cube. Thank you very much. Thank you.